I think we live in a world of give and take, mm -hmm. right? Especially when it comes to relationship. And it's like, okay, if he can't give finances, then I'm not giving anything back, mm -hmm. right? Or I'm not going to give him the woman that he wants, or I'm not going to give him submission. So it's like submission has to be bought nowadays. Um, just having a good wife has to be paid for nowadays. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't earn this amount, then I'm not worthy to have that. I feel like beauty is to women what money is to men, right? I think beauty is transactional. So men want beautiful women. Women want well-to-do men. So if you're going to say that women should value something outside of money, I agree with that. But I also think men have to, if they're going to, they have to also start valuing something outside of beauty in women. Well, here's a lie for you women. There's a lot of men that hide behind his money. And when you learn that men are hiding behind money, he doesn't really know who he is. We already know that. Yeah, but they still do it. No, no, we know that we're using him. You know, it's so funny, right? They always, I think that's a great thing. Like they say like, could you date yourself? Mm -hmm. And if you think your partner is a lot like you, then the answer to that is yes. Yeah, you know? I, yeah, yeah, I definitely. But I, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have dated him like before. Like this is yeah. my second marriage. What was your first marriage like? Oh, what was he? Capricorn. I'll never throw it a sign that. away. I'll I try never to tell them. Do that again. I try, think, can know, I get a pound? I'm, I'm telling you, it's because they're born in the cold winter months. <laughs> they, they don't are, even get it. Like, are, like I would never. Like I would never even. Mm -mm. I always say the same thing, and I think that you know I'm not gonna tie this into it, but yeah. you know J Cole's born close to it, you know. So, but you know what? I, I, I appreciate him. <laughs> I really, really appreciate him apologizing. Really? You don't? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't appreciate. Okay. My thing is this. I'm all for apologizing, right? Yeah. I think that's like one of the strongest, like mature thing that you can do. Right. But I think what's even more mature mm -hmm. is not engaging. I agree. I mean, and I can't disagree with that. You know, so like if you, especially when you create something. Right. And I don't like wishy-washy people. Okay. You I know? get it. I get it. I didn't expect him to do that. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like he came back to himself, which is hard. I don't think he ever left. Given to, no, I think he gave into pressure mm -hmm. because that's not really his thing. Mm -hmm. And then he couldn't sit with himself. And then he came back. So that made him, it is wishy-washy, but... I respect him more for doing that than if he had just left it out there. Yeah, no. Nah. Wait, how long were you married for in the first marriage? 11 years. 11 years? Yeah. Wow. And then what happened? Like, well, I don't want to say what happened. <laughs> Obviously, horrible. there's probably a bunch of things that happened, right? No, but, really not. No? No. Like, honestly, we were together for 13 years. 10 amazing years. Uh -huh. Two really bad years. And that ended it. Which Really? Yeah. yeah. What was the start? Or I caused um, trouble, like financial. He lost his job. I got cancer. Wow. We just didn't know how to handle that. So he had an affair. Yep. An affair, or he cheated? Like I mean, they no, might it was be an affair. Okay, got gotcha. Like he was, he was talking to her about, you know, and I can look back on it now and I get it. It's 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 stressful. Got two kids. Your wife has cancer. You can't fix yeah. it. Great time to get a blowjob. Not think about it. You know what I mean? That's like, got to wait, stop because it sounds crazy. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's how it felt. Like that, that felt crazy. So then he just like fell in love with the woman. It became like she was like the drug to keep him away from the stress of the outlet. Yes. And then he thought he was in love with her. And then, of course, I don't understand that because I'm like, I almost died. Like we got kids. Like, so no. So I left and never looked back. Of course, him and the woman broke up you know what I mean so um but I just think people don't know how to handle I didn't we didn't know how to handle tough times. I don't excuse his behavior but I understand it and we were super young we got married at 20 and 23 so you don't have us too old at that age. well I will definitely like to say kudos to you for going through and beating the cancer Thank you. right mm -hmm. um and that's also unfortunate. I mean, and that's another thing. I think that like a lot of a lot of people get into relationships 
or marriages. Yeah. Um, and they're never really fully bat- battle tested yet. Yeah. And I think that's like a thing that really kind of gives you a, a perspective of how far you two can go together. Right. Or how, like what's your tolerance, you know, or your threshold of but life. You know, but I don't think like some battles you don't know until you get there. You know what I mean? So because we were together a long time. So there was obviously battles during that yeah. time. Like we were, we had 10 amazing years. So grandmother died, family members died, kid gets sick, like a lot of bad things. But when he lost his job and he doesn't have the ability to provide or to fix it, and then I'm sick and the kids are afraid their mom's going to die, he had no tools. And he was not like a really communicative man. So I don't think, I think we, I agree, but I think we made it through a lot of bad stuff. It just was too much and we didn't have any place to go. You know what I mean? To like help. So, you know. When you never look back, is there a reason why you never gave it a, a second opportunity? I think we didn't know how to. Like, I was so hurt. I didn't know. And he was like, she's never going to forgive me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, like, so now I wish, like, looking back, I wish somebody had been like, you know, you don't have to, like, divorce your family. Like, leave everything because something bad happened. I didn't know that. Because the narrative is, oh, he cheated, leave. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. I found out he cheated at 10 o'clock. I left at midnight and I never went back, ever. Yeah, and it was the first time I ever, ever, ever heard that he cheated, ever, in that time. Well, since, you know, college. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like I told one of my mentors, I wish I had a woman in my life that told me something else positive about men besides just, ooh, they're trying, you know, as soon as they fuck yeah. up me. Like, I wish, I do think there has to be more conversation, but. You know, it just depends on the situation because there's some guys you give a chance to when he's going to do it again and again and again. But then there's some people that really do want to save their families. I mean, we had a lot of good. I threw away a lot of good for a little bad. You know what I mean? So but I don't think with us, we probably just weren't meant to be together. Who knows? Well, we're not going to dwell on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're in a whole happy place now. Yeah, you know, but... um. I definitely want to say thank you for coming to Eight at the Table. Of course. So we typically do three icebreaker questions. Okay. All right. Well, okay. I, I don't know if I should ask you one of them, but I'll ask you the other two first. Okay. All right. You can ask me anything, though. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. You're a Libra. Yeah, you're open-minded. All right. Come on, Libra. <laughs> let's go. So, all right. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got too comfortable. So um, I know you said you're not a big drinker. No. But if you had to choose a drink, what would be your go-to alcoholic beverage? So my go-to drink is just whatever the bartender makes that's sweet and fruity. Like, Imagine. it could be like a Bahama Mama. It could be like something with coconut. Anything where I don't taste the alcohol. High as a liquor. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. All right. Uh, second one. Um, if you had to go out to dinner with anybody dead or alive, who would it be? My granny. My granny. Your granny. My granny passed away. And she gave me so many amazing like life lessons that when she was alive, I did not understand. And now that I'm grown, like I think back on the stuff that she said <laughs> and I wish I could talk to her again. So That's amazing. Yeah. And the last one is, okay. if you had to get, if you had the chance to have an intimate moment with anybody with only 24 hours to live. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> be honest, Libra. I'm going to be honest and okay. And I'm going to say, I don't want my husband to get mad at me about this. <laughs> he's a Libra. He understands. He is a Libra and he does understand. And I'm going to assume that he's not available, right? Yeah. If this happened. <laughs> so if, if he, he's not available because I don't know, he's gone someplace and I have 24 hours. <laughs> the Mo Better Blues version of Denzel Washington. <laughs> Or the devil in a blue dress version of Denzel Washington. Or. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's it. I think between those two. Yeah. Devil in a blue dress. Mo Better Blues. Denzel Washington. Yeah. I got some unfortunate news for you. What? Denzel is a Capricorn. I do. No. Um, I do know that because I know a lot about Denzel Washington. <laughs> 
I do. But as you know, if you know, if you're a Denzel Washington fan, um, he has given his life. He has been redeemed. He's given his life. <laughs> He's given his life to Christ. And so I feel like all the things that deal with Capricorn men do not affect the the amazing, honorable Mr. Denzel Washington. Does not apply to him. Shout out to Denzel. Shout out to Denzel. I ain't gonna lie. He's actually one of my favorite actors. He gotta be. Yeah. How can he not be? And he has an amazing, like, how he carries himself. Now that we see all this, like, how Hollywood really is, the fact that he's been able to remain private and keep his family, and he makes smart decisions. He's, like, a great example of, like, from what we know on the outside. I'm sure there's some stuff that Pauletta has dealt with that we don't even want to know. But he just carries himself in the way, to me, a man that is a leader and is a great example, you know, I, I just, you gotta, you gotta give him his props. No, I definitely do. All right, Crystal. So okay. today's topic, mm -hmm. right. And I think it's going to be a great conversation for us. Yes, I think so. So let's gear towards solution based, right. But before yeah. we go to the solution part, we have to identify what we think is the core root right. of the issue. Right. Right. And so today's question mm -hmm. is, what do you think lie or what kind of lie yeah. do you think is keeping women single? Okay. Um, I think I, am, I was excited when I saw this question because I feel like I've gone through um, understanding this myself. This lie was keeping me single, right? I was okay. single for a long time. This lie kept me single. And I think that women are taught or even um, encouraged by other women to believe that they can find this man that does not really exist, right? So this man that has expendable income that he can just take them on, you know, <laughs> excursions and getaways. And um, he has, he's cultured. He is able to, um, you know, go into a boardroom and carry himself in, in a way that is able to get deals on the table. Like they've been taught to believe that like a combination of Jay-Z and Warren Buffett and like <laughs> <laughs> is out there waiting on them. And this man does not exist. And that's the problem. I think, you know, especially the social media narrative is pushing this like, wait, you know, if he's not treating you this, if he's not buying you this, he's not worth it. And it's like, who are these? Who are? Y'all going to be waiting and it's not, he's mm -hmm. not out there. Or they're going to be getting the fakes. Or they're going to get scammed. Yep. They're going to yep. get scammed. Yep. So who do you think told this lie? Well, I think social media tells the lie now. Now, but before. Social media tells a lie. But I think, I think what happened is like women in my parents' generation, we saw them, they, they could not work. A lot of them could not work or they didn't have the skills to work outside of like being uh, take being domestics, right? So they were at the mercy of their husbands, which is a horrible place to be, yeah. right? Because then there was a lot of abuse and men were taking advantage of that. So then my generation came, we were like, oh, I don't want to be that, right? So yeah. I'm going to earn on my own. So then we started doing that. So you see that there, there's uh, the feminist movement happened and women started doing more, becoming more educated. And in some places, really have surpassed men when it comes to education, right? And that's because anything that's oppressed, especially us, yeah. as people of color, we're going to rise to it. So when that happened, then our daughters saw that, right? So then <laughs> mixed with a little bit of toxicity, <laughs> and then you have the city girls, right? <laughs> and it, it's a little sprinkle. Yeah, a little sprinkle, and it becomes like, I don't need a man unless he's paying. And it, it just, it, but it all came from, there's a trajectory of, Toxic relationships, dysfunction, oppression, women being oppressed, not wanting to deal with that, and then it being not being addressed in a there's not a lot of fathers in the house at one point mm -hmm. where fathers were taken from the home. So there's no one to say, hey, we're people too, right? And so now you have a generation of women who see men as uh ATM machines. Yeah. Right? I I mean, I agree. Um the thing is you know, they, they have that old saying, um, teach the teach history so it doesn't repeat itself. Right. But I actually like came to this conclusion and I'm not saying that this applies for all the time. Right. 
But maybe you shouldn't because we teach history and all it does is bring forth the same situation yeah. or a traumatic response to a situation yeah. um, because we teach history and we tell people what happened and, you know, the reasons why it happened. Mm -hmm. But we never told people how to deal with what happened. Yeah. And then when we have the responses, that's the response that I would assume is the mix of the toxic toxicity that gets sprinkled in there. And now you get to this, I don't need a man thing, right? Yeah. Um, I, I agree that is one of the major lies that were told to women. Mm -hmm. But I also think that we have another lie too. Okay. Right? Yeah. I think that there's a lie that women never needed men. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's newer. Mm -hmm. I don't think that has always existed. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's so funny to me because growing up, even to this day, I've never heard a man say, I don't need any woman. No, I've you know what I'm saying? I, like, I've never heard a man say, I don't need any woman. We know we need a woman. Mm -hmm. What woman, you know, some of them have good discernment. Some of them don't. Women. It's usually women in plural. Yes. Right. So it's not like woman. It's like, I need women. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I need a couple. <laughs> Not even a couple. Right. <laughs> it's just like men need women. Women back, you know, I, I think everything goes back to history, though, because I agree with you. That is a bad, that's a horrible lie, right? Mm -hmm. And we realize that it actually is hurtful. I didn't realize how hurtful it is to men until, you know, writing my book over the last few years, I realized that that actually is hurtful. But it's a response. It's still a response. I mean, you think about, a single mom in the 50s that's raising her family. My grandmother was born in 1930, right? And so my grandmother raised three kids. She was married three times, but it never stuck. And so her daughter, my mom, saw, well, you can do this without. And, you know, a man may come in and hurt you or mess your program up. And so that's where that comes from. You have families that, are, that don't include a man. How do you know you need one if you don't see one actively involved? Of course. Yeah, I mean, and we already know the different various reasons, reasons that, that happen, happen right. right? And my thing is this, right? We get to that point, and then what's, like, when people make a decision, right? and I'm not a woman, so, some, so I don't know how women think, right? Mm -hmm. But for a man, but before I make a decision, most times, not all the time, okay? I actually lay out what is going to, I project what's going to happen after following this decision, decision right? So if I go out into the world and I say, um, every woman should be the Virgin Mary. Right. And I hold on to that, mm -hmm. which I think was a lie that men told men mm -hmm. at, at one point. And then we came to a realization that that's not the truth. Right. Um, yeah, we were all chasing Mary. <laughs> with stripper with stripper abilities though yeah with, yeah, yeah like uh, she's gotta be like i haven't slept with anybody but know how to be the freakiest person that just for me though which don't make sense doesn't make sense at all <laughs> it requires experience right what was it a freak in the sheets and what lady in the streets freak in the sheets well now i don't want any lady in the streets either um because these streets is crazy uh <laughs> but, but that 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 whole idea is like crazy and i think that now my ver my views are going to be probably not the views of most of your viewers so they're going to get mad at me but that's okay okay <laughs> i'm okay with that um i feel like because i believe in the bible right i feel like women were made for men so when like i think toy story is a great example so woody is the child he gets a tool no woody no i think adam is the child Woody is the toy. He's given to the child. The child plays with it, loves it, and then he decides, I don't want you anymore. The toy's entire self-esteem is built into being wanted and loved and appreciated. So I think when men say to women, I, you know, you're not enough. I need many of you. <laughs> it's hurtful in a way that men probably don't process because we think differently, right? So women are like, I want to be the one for him. And the man is like, I need several of them. <laughs> and then it causes this rejection and feeling of, well, I'm going to do the same thing that, that he's doing. And so now we have a, now we have some reverse stuff that's happening. But I think that at the core, 
women. That's why men don't say they don't need women because they knew that they did from the beginning. It's like, I'm lonely. I need something soft. Bump this. Yep. But women never had that experience because we're the improved version. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's great. But I agree though. I, th- I think that's a great analogy. And I mean, in, in all honesty, again, going back to the core question. Yeah. One of the lies that I feel um, that were told to women and men have also accepted. Mm-hmm. This is going to be a little crazy. Okay. I'm gonna, but I'm going, with you, though. We're going with it. Right? That men should only have one wife. Mm. And when I look, and we just look at just facts. Right. You know, one of the oldest religion, religions you know, promotes or has the ability to have more than one wife. Mm -hmm. And I believe that religion was um, Islam, the Bible as well. Mm -hmm. There are men who are mentioned that had more than one wife. Absolutely. Um, Some didn't work out in his favor, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) But the thing is, it's something that I do believe, again, you know, we have this lie that men can't love more than one woman. Mm. I don't think that's the truth. I like, the way I look at it is I have two kids. I could love both of my kids <laughs> equally. You know, I think one kind of makes me more happier at times than the other. That's but right. the love does not differentiate, yeah. Yeah. you know, because they also both piss me off at the same amount as well. That's just a very different relationship. though. Yes. Because I, I have two kids and, and I have a friend that tells me, oh, you love one more than the other. And I honestly don't. Thankfully, I have a girl and a boy. Yeah. So I have a different, a very different relationship with each. Um, but. I mean, and I and I understand that argument. I don't agree with it, but I do understand it because it, it, there is a lot of like logic behind it based in religion. But I also think if we're going to talk about that, you have to look at because Islam is one of the uh, one of the religious, um, one of the religions that really has a lot of amazing, I guess, tropes to it as far as community and and the definition of manhood in Islam and the de- definition of womanhood. So I feel like we're not really, we like to cherry pick what parts of it we like. like. So it's like, oh, I want to have more than one wife. But do you also want to follow all these other tenets that go along with that? Now, I will admit to you, just you and just people in this room, (laughs) (laughs) that most women, if if we're honest, right, Mm -hmm. most women would rather be one of two with a man that she respected and that provided for her and made her feel safe than one of one with a man that she did not respect. I don't want to do that. But I do think, and and I think for me, the option would probably be just to be by myself. But it's because when you take away the fact of, okay, if a man is providing, specifically financially, if I don't need him to provide financially, then why am I sharing a house with another woman? I don't have to do that. Like back in the day, you know, I probably would have had to, but now I could just go get my own house. So I don't have to do that if I don't want to. So I'm not saying a man can't love. And there's a lot of women that enjoy that and love it. And I think they should continue and Godspeed. But if you don't want to, I don't think any of us should do anything that makes us unhappy. Do you think that happiness is kind of trained? I think everybody has their own definition of happiness. And I think that as you mature as an adult, you learn to figure out what is your definition. Like I said, I have good friends that are in polygamous relationships, and I applaud that. I applaud anyone being themselves. I don't think you should take the society's viewpoint of what happiness is for you, right? right? But I think the bigger issue is just we don't have an understanding of what reality is because we're living in a in a time where people are, I don't know, it's like, even the the like the financial institutions have said people are exaggerating what they earn so much that it's ridiculous and people are buying into this. You know that only two point three percent of the population earns over half a million dollars a year. I don't know how much it would take to have multiple yeah. wives, but I would assume it would be more than a hundred thousand. Yeah. You could barely take care of one wife on that. And so when you look at and then Two point no two point three percent earn that at that amount. Over a million dollars is one percent. 
So her year too. Her year. Not one time. Right, right. Yeah. It has to continue to go. You can't be like, I earned a million and now I'm good. Yeah. No, you have to continue to do that. So yeah. Every at year. what point are we? So what does that look like? What is taking care of a wife and providing for her look like? So if you want to have four, what is that? What what are those requirements? Well, I think, you know, that just um brought me to another thought about another lie I feel like is brought to the table is that there's only one way a man can provide. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's financial. Mm -hmm. I think and and in today's era, right? I wish I actually saved it, but there was this um a video that was made on Instagram and it literally was showing the trajectory from I think nineteen seventy, mm -hmm. um, the cost of living versus right. the average income. And literally you see the the average income teeter around here, mm -hmm. but the cost of living at this point is over here, but, right. but yet you're only right here. Yeah. And I think when you really look at it, it's like, it's almost impossible for somebody to, I don't want to say impossible, but it's almost unrealistic to think that a man can fully provide in full, mm -hmm. um, given the economy today in America specifically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially in certain cities like, or certain places like New York City, Mm -hmm. um, New Jersey, California, Hawaii, which are the four most expensive mm -hmm. places, maybe somewhere in like Idaho, you could do it, mm -hmm. you know, where, where the cost is low. But I think that we have to also be open minded to the different ways that men are valuable other than finances. Mm -hmm. And when we start to look at that, then I feel like, you know, we, I think we live in a world of give and take, mm -hmm. right? Especially when it comes to relationship. And it's like, okay, if he can't give finances, then I'm not giving anything back, mm -hmm. right? Or I'm not going to give him the woman that he wants, or I'm not going to give him submission. So it's like submission has to be bought nowadays. Um, just having a good wife has to be paid for nowadays. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't earn this amount, then I'm not worthy to have that mm -hmm. um, quality in a wife. And I feel like that's not necessarily right. Yeah. Because as long as he's a good man to you for whatever you may need, right? Your necessities may be different than the next. Then maybe you should, you know, trade intangible for intangibles rather than intangibles for monetary. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. But I, I, I have a different opinion because I feel like I feel like beauty is to women what money is to men, right? I think beauty is transactional. So. Men want beautiful women. Women want well-to-do men. So if you're going to say that women should value something outside of money, I agree with that. But I also think men have to, if they're going to, they have to also start valuing something outside of beauty in women. And we don't want to do that. Neither side really wants to do that. We want to say that, but we really want a beautiful woman that everyone else wants and understands that I may not be a millionaire and she just loves me instead, Right. I don't really want to sacrifice what I want physically. Just like women, that beautiful woman doesn't really want to sacrifice what she wants. Look at Aoki Simmons, right? And the and the oh my wealthy, God. No, the, the restaurateur, <laughs> the, it, probably billionaire that she's da that she was dating. He wanted Wait, was dating or is dating. Well, we hear that they may have it may not be happening anymore. Oh wow, who knows? But just looking at the situation when they were there. Okay, yeah. when they were there. So she's 21. Youth and beauty are the top tenants for women. That, that's what men want. She's untouched. Well, we don't know if she's untouched, but she doesn't have any children. Yeah. Right? She Most likely no untouched. <laughs> untouched as far as like she has, she's 21. Yeah, How much she can't she have to, she's, hopefully. You know. Right. Well, just for the, she looks very untouched, right? <laughs> Drop dead. <laughs> Drop dead gorgeous. She looks like a model. Her mother was, you know, we know, yeah. you know, the, we know the lineage, right? She's also been um, raised in an environment where she's been around wealthy men. She knows how to carry herself. Perfect, right? He, she wants to go to St. Bart's. She knows how to act at St. Bart's. He wants something young and beautiful. Perfect exchange. Fair exchange is not robbery. Now, <laughs> when, a, when, a, <laughs> when a man who earns 60000 a year looks at Aoki and is like, I want a woman like that. Well, sir, you can't afford that. That's not what you can afford. And you have to be okay with that. Now, if you want her to look at something different in you, 
you have to be willing to also look at something different in her. But I think that we got to a point where being beautiful is average. And I think that's the thing. like, especially when it comes to being able to have sex with. Mm hmm. It's so easy, I, I, right? I, I In know. comparison to, let's say, like 30 years ago, right? Right? 30 years ago, a woman wasn't, I, I, I could be wrong because I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was, but I was very young. Maybe, right? Yeah, you know, but 30 years ago, I would assume, if I had to guess, right. there was less one-night stands happening in 1992 than it is in 2024. And I think... Mm. Ah, yeah? I don't know about you that. You think it's the same? I think there's nothing new under the sun. I think everything is the same. I think it's just as more, we talk about it more. There was you no think 21 media. years old, 21 year old in 1990. You have access, right? If you're 21 years old, you couldn't get on Instagram, show your pictures and some rich football player <laughs> fly you out because he wouldn't see you. Yeah. So now that means. But now there's access. You don't have to be a celebrity. Right. You can have 50,000 followers yeah. <laughs> and you're a celebrity. So it's, I yeah. think if, I, again, I would, I would argue, and this mm -hmm. is just my opinion, there's way more women having more frivolous sex at a younger age, more consistent than they were 30 years ago. That's what I would I argue. agree with you, but I, as far as like the, the access, so they might've been having sex with people at their high school, but now yeah. you can get, <laughs> you can get flued out by someone who sees you, you know, in Kansas mm -hmm. and says, I want, that's what I want. I want to fly her here. I don't think beauty is average because if it was, men would be... <laughs> Men wouldn't be chasing it the way they are. No, I think the, the thing is, they are. And you know, it's funny is a lot of men are building their women. They, I have ten thousand. I have ten thousand dollars. I'm gonna invest eighty five hundred dollars into her body. I'll invest eighty five hundred dollars into her teeth. I'll invest, you know, a thousand dollars into her hair. And That's next true. thing I know, I have what I already wanted. It, well, because the 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 standard that like the the goalpost yeah. keeps moving, right? But I think going back to Yoki, you you can't. Like you can get her some breasts probably like, you know, and you can do so, but that's just gorgeousness. Like that's just, she's 21. Like that's not, I'm not going to lie. I've seen way prettier 21 year olds. I, of course. And I'm sure there are some billionaires that have them, but, but not only is she pretty, but she also has been taught how to carry herself and it's, how to, how to move in those circles, which is also a valuable point. Well, my thing is with her. Oh, right. So with that example, right. Um, my, my thing about that example is that it's almost not a fair exchange, right? Because most women who seek out, um, especially at 21, I'm speaking, mm -hmm. right? Young women right. who seek out a man um, for a, even exchange of money, mm -hmm. they're not coming for money. Right. I so when they're not coming for money, I think it's more so of a desperation. Now for her situation, I can understand it a little bit more mm -hmm. Not saying I agree, but I can understand it more because that's what she's already accustomed to. That's her lifestyle, right. which makes it a little bit more weird because you can go to St. Bart's by yourself, right? You definitely have the finances to do so. Um, but for me, I think that, again, the goalpost has been moved to a sense where natural beauty isn't as valuable anymore. I agree with that. Which makes being beautiful easier and more accessible for women, right? Mm -hmm. And more men, well... I disagree, but women think mm -hmm. that men prefer the BBLs over the natural, yeah. right? And um, I think it depends on the man. And it depends on what goal he's going after. Like, if he's trying to hit, then he may. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I live in Atlanta, so. Oh, you live in Atlanta? I live in Atlanta. So, so. you see a lot. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I was a celebrity publicist for 20 years. So, oh, so you know a lot. I know a lot. <laughs> And I've been around circles where you see when a man has money, he can get anything he wants. So then it becomes the goalpost continues to move because it's just it's sport fishing. Right. So I think it depends if a lot of times what I'm playing with may not look like what I want at the house. It just depends. But well, you got to also think, right. Mm -hmm. Those men that play with it. Mm -hmm. No diddy. Um, <laughs> uh, they never keep them. That's what they, they throw it back. Right. So I don't think it's really a fair exchange. That's what I'm saying. But who's who's getting who's getting taken advantage of? No, no, I don't think that any. Well, really, what I think if we're talking about who's getting taken advantage of, I think if we're speaking on a younger woman, mm -hmm. I'm not saying 32 and a 55 year old. Okay. What I'm saying is a woman in her early 20s, even late teens, mm -hmm. hell, even mid 20s, because there's a a robbery of innocence and then 
a a just a whole door of just delusion yeah. that is now open. <laughs> and the only way she's going to be able to get that is to chase the 1% of men mm-hmm. that are never going to give her what she's actually looking for. Right. And she's just going to be able to supply them for the time being, mm-hmm. you know, so he could play with her and then put her back down when he's done. Mm-hmm. So I think like those type of women or those type of situation is not so much a fair exchange. And um, that's why for me, I would be like, Right. <laughs> if it was so, if you're saying that you would not want to deal with, you wouldn't want to deal with a young, beautiful woman just to finance her because it wouldn't be worth it to you. Well, yeah, because at the end of the day, the finance is, I would. That's why they call it tricking, right? You know, mm-hmm. they would trick on them and to get what they want, and that'll be it. You know, yeah. and a lot of times these men would rather pay for things because in order for me to get the only other option is for me to actually let you know who I am. Yeah. Make me. Well, not make me, but I would charm you Mm -hmm. and then I'd get you to like me. Mm -hmm. And then when I get you to like me and then I leave you, now you're really heartbroken. Right. And a lot of guys can't deal with heartbreaks. Right. Yes, I agree with you. So they don't want to be the heartbreaker, but they rather be like, okay, I gave you some I gave you I breadcrumbed you. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going to stop throwing the breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to be upset because the lifestyle changed, but you never really liked me anyway. So it's not that bad. I really feel bad about it. But I think from where you sit. Of course you wouldn't. You're young and good looking. Why would you do that? If you thank you, <laughs> let's thank circle you. back in forty years. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> then you may be like, you know what? Like you, you know, like that guy. That guy is in his sixties. You know what I mean? And I, one of the things I've I've learned from being around older men who have a lot of well, just being just being a celebrity publicist, and that's a very small window of people. I'm not saying that's the average. When men are at that point. It doesn't bother them too because they understand life, right? The older you get, you the more you understand life. I don't want to deal with a lot of mouth. I don't want to deal with a lot of attitude. I don't want to deal with. I'd rather just go down to Spelman, get this little twenty-two year old who just wants some, you know, Louboutins, and take her out, and enjoy her company. He's call it a day. And call it a day because <laughs> you know what? If I deal with this woman who's in her thirties or forties. She's. Go- I don't want to deal with all that. This is what it's. It's convenience. Money allows you to to have convenience. So of course, someone like you wouldn't. But you're also not dealing from a vantage point of being older, right? So Aoki's not looking at that man if he doesn't have money. Like she probably wouldn't even notice him in a room. So where she may even notice someone like yourself. So you really can't speak to what you would do, or what you wouldn't do, because you're not in that place yet. So I gave you a, a quick story. Okay. Right? I got an uncle, mm-hmm. right? Demetrius. Mm-hmm. Uncle Deep. Okay. No Diddy. <laughs> right? And I was, let's say, 23. Okay. Hey, and he was around 46, 47, mm-hmm. right? And his son, I used to coach, right, for okay. football. We, he was still in high school, so I was trying to get him ready to, to play college football. Mm-hmm. And um, we, go, we went to the same gym together or whatever, and he would show me all the girls he had, right? Mm-hmm. They were always around my age, a little older. Like, I remember the baddest one he had was 28. Mm-hmm. And I actually caught him mm-hmm. walking with her outside. And I was like, yo, <laughs> Unk, what are you doing, bro? And then when he, he's like, yo, relax. I was like, does she got friends? <laughs> because <laughs> we might as well just do this together, bro. Like, we're already just in the same space. So then, right, um, COVID happens. Yeah. You know, this, now we're fast forwarding years, right? So then COVID happens. Now it's post COVID. Right. I would say 2022 or maybe early last year, 2023. Okay. I run into him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, where you been? I haven't seen you. I'm like, you know, da da da. I haven't heard from you in like a year or so, whatever, whatever. He's like, yo, you know, I've been, you know, working overtime and doing what I do. And he's like, guess what? I said, what? He's like, I think I'm about to get married. And I was like, who to the to the 28 year old from back then? He said, nah. The girl was in her 40s. The woman was in her 40s, right? He was actually about to be 50. Right. Or 51, something like that. And um, he's like, yeah, we're going to get married. And she's like some top, big time attorney. And, mm-hmm. you know, she has all these different accolades. And mm-hmm. they were really kicking it off. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I thought it was very eye-opening. Because mm-hmm. being on the podcast space since 2018, I had a lot of different conversations and a lot of different perspectives, right? And I think just off of that when i was able to put myself into his shoes mm-hmm. and it's like 
Well, for me, I always felt like I want somebody in my league, right? And I believe that if I'm a billionaire, even at 65, a 22 year old, I don't care who her father, mother is, they're not in my league, right? I would, I would be dating down, mm-hmm. right? And I would try not to date that far beneath me. Um, no offense, mm-hmm. but <laughs> he went and finally found a woman he can actually relate to, he can actually build with and mm-hmm. continue to live with a great companionship and understanding. And I feel like when we have a 30, 20, 50 year old age gap, whatever, to even 10 yeah. year, year old age gap, there is a lack of understanding that will, you know, nobody wants to be, I say this all the time. Mm-hmm. Like people ask me to do mentors. I was like, I'm not trying to teach nobody, <laughs> right? I would tell you what, what I think you should do. Right. But I could never imagine, especially being a man, right, having to live as a tutor for the rest of my life. If I was 50 years old and she was 22 years old, yeah. and I'm kind of trying to guide her through her life, and it's like, all right, I get it, but I feel like, you know, most men, we would rather, at that age, would rather play with it and put it back down mm-hmm. than to keep it until they find somebody who is somewhat closer, yeah. you know, just because life experiences. Now, I got to say one other thing, though. Okay. All right. Now, hear me out. <laughs> okay. How long have you been in Atlanta? Oof, 2005. Okay. So here's my issue with Atlanta. Okay. Right? Atlanta mm-hmm. is, in my opinion, yeah. my opinion, is not the real is the delusional place of the America. Right. Right? Like, in my opinion. Okay. Shout out to BMF. <laughs> because they damaged Atlanta so bad, it's still a tricking culture, right? And if there's people that in the comments said that it was tricking before then. Yeah, but I think that it's just elevated, more modernized trick tricking now. And I've been to Hollywood though, huh? We've been to Hollywood. Yeah, but Hollywood it's a lot of tricking in Hollywood. It's just a more sophisticated tricking. But also Hollywood is listen. Hollywood is also more compromising too because they understand majority of them are not going to make it. So they're like, okay, as long as we have, we're both on the same page here. I'll take what I can get. I can take what I can get, right? We can align here. Yeah. But I do think, like, in my opinion, and I've dated a few women from Atlanta. Yeah. And I'm like, where does your mind come from when it comes from what, like, you're giving and what a man is supposed to be doing? Yeah. And um, back in the day, I had this dude who was originally, you know, part of the real BMF. And mm-hmm. he's older. And we had a whole, like, hour, two-hour saga. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I kind of fucked the game up. <laughs> And then he was like, no, nah, y'all didn't want to listen. I'm like, well, y'all didn't want to teach. Like, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I do, that's just my little, yeah. my little thing There's in it. Connection to BMF. Yeah, like, I think they're dope. Shout yeah. them out. You know, they've done a lot. But I do think that, um, like, even the artists there, right? We look at rappers from New York, mm-hmm. and then you look at rappers from Atlanta. Yeah. They're big into that, you know, that culture, that type of lifestyle. Like, you know, give a girl 50000 or like stuff like that, but in a, like in yeah. New York, that's not happening. <laughs> like we we live differently, but yeah. they have the spotlight, right? So it's influencing a lot of the world and our culture and community specifically, yeah, right. It's, it's also bleeding into other cultures as well. Don't get me yeah. wrong. And I think I think I can agree to an extent, but I don't think Atlanta. I think Atlanta is gets a bad rap because we are the place where so much is going on with with entertainment. So when I first moved there, it was music was the thing. But at this point, it's now Black Hollywood, too. So and I just feel like because I spent a lot of time in L.A. and I spent a lot of time in New York. New York is definitely different, especially when I started working here, because it was just not the same as it was, you know, back in the day when it was just a very different place. But in L.A., you do have the same things going on. It's just not as loud Mm -hmm. because we as a people are so if we're going to do something, it's, yeah, like, you know, they're in a strip club throwing 50000 and it's on the shade room, right? Or back on media takeout back yeah. in the day. But in LA, if a man is giving a woman 50000 that's probably not something that's going to make it to social media, you know what I mean? Or it may, it just may be different. So when you look at the lifestyle, like the Kardashians and the women that are out there, they're doing the same things. <laughs> it's just done in a much different way. This is under the radar. The culture is different. About tricking culture kind of leaked into one of the lies that I think women have, you know, been fed and eat and eat up because just the stats, 1% of people are making a million dollars a year. 2% of people are making $500,000 a year. 
that means 98% of people are making less than that. Mm-hmm. And I believe about 89 or 90% aren't even making 100,000 a yeah. year. Yeah. So like when you have 90% of people not even making six figures, yeah. right? And as a six figure earner, it's not a lot, right? So so really I would I would say 500,000 I'll be comfortable. Yeah. Right? So and I'm not in the 2%. Right. So now when we have other people that are or are, are not and then you have women thinking that 98% of people can afford this lifestyle. You know, Mykonos is like $5,000 for two people yeah. just to fly. Right, right, right. You know, just to fly. I didn't even get to the hotel. I didn't right. even get to the... You just got on a plane. Yeah. Now we got to eat. We got to travel. We got to do excursions. Yeah. And if you make $100,000 a year... You cannot do that. You cannot do that. And if you do it, it's once and you've planned it. For two years. It, right? <laughs> <laughs> Paid on it over... I I think that's a big problem, but I also feel like this, and this is just the the harsh reality, right? Chris Rock did a stand-up years ago where he said, women cannot go backwards when it comes to how they've been, how they've been, the lifestyle they've been introduced to. And men cannot go backwards when it comes to the sexual lifestyle they've been accustomed to, right? And I think I can say as a woman and, and as a woman who is a, you know, editor, I do relationship content for our magazines and I've talked to so many women. It's true. <laughs> women cannot go backwards. <laughs> There's no way if a woman has been treated now this is the this is the catch. If a woman has been treated by a man who's going to throw her back. That man had no intentions of marrying her. He just was enjoying himself, right? I have a a guy friend who is in that 1%, right? Maybe in that 2.3%. And he said, "I Cause I'm like, why are you doing this with these girls? He's like, understand. I just want to go eat. And I like the company of a pretty young lady. So if I want to go eat, I want her to go. It's nothing for me. It's not a big deal for me. If I get her a pair of 1500, what is that going to do to me? It's not a big deal, Crystal. It's not a big deal to me. It's convenient. Right. But unfortunately that girl has been exposed. And now when she's dating a man who really could possibly see her as a future, she's unable to go back because she's been exposed but it's hard yeah it's hard i have a question right Mm -hmm. do you what's your opinion on are women younger women i would say Mm -hmm. let's say like younger single women you know in their 20s Mm -hmm. um are they women that you can actually build with or are they women that you have to come equipped with equipped for um I think that there are, I will, I will, okay. Well, there's some, of course. There are some that, that you can build with, but I think that the ones that a lot of men may be targeting are the ones that want someone that's already equipped, right? So if you see someone who is on social media and she has over 50,000 followers and mm-hmm. she likes the fact that she gets a lot of attention, she doesn't want to build. She's not, she's not into building, right? Now, if you get a girl that's really working like and doing her thing and she's not really focused on the attention like they're very obvious signs of what that person is into so men are logical right or at least that's the what we've been taught so it's weird to me to see the logical sex so f- just unable to understand <laughs> why a woman who has you know a hundred thousand followers on instagram based on her beauty Right. Because that's all it's based on. It's not delivering content that's really impactful. She's gorgeous and other girls want to look like her so that they can get guys. And he wants a woman that looks like that and acts like that to be willing to build. She's advertising so that she doesn't have to. build. So she's technically building herself. She's building herself and she wants a man who's going to appreciate that. I think um, a thing that women don't know, a lot of women don't know is that some men only want you because you are the top pick of the litter. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. But that doesn't mean he wants to keep you. I agree. That, and that's, that's the problem. I think that's the problem. I think that, I remember my mom told me something. She said, women, men will destroy a beautiful woman because they will gas their head up and the woman thinks she's so much finer than everybody else and she can have all these men and they, they give her the attention. And attention is a drug. Mm-hmm. So all these girls that get the attention, they think that they can have the man. 
but they, that doesn't mean that you can have him. It means you can have him for that moment. And he's serious about that moment. He's not sincere about the, the totality of it. So then they'll say, then he, later when he actually settles down with a different type of girl, the girl feels like, oh, he, I could have her man. You could probably have him for a night, <laughs> but, but that doesn't have. mean that you can have him. <laughs> you could borrow. Right. You could, you could, you could, you could, you could rent or lease it for a, a night, but he probably, because I think women believe that because they can get the attention from a man and a man, I'm telling a man reaction to beauty is over. Like I've been, <laughs> I'm not going to go into detail, but I've been around some ex what the world considers some of the most beautiful women as far as society, right? Culture and all that. The way men act, it tricks me. I'm like, oh my God, he's going to marry her. <laughs> he's, he's in love. <laughs> it's Thanks. crazy. Like, he is just going in and it's, 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 it, it is daunting. That's why I'm like, yeah, that's so true. Cause you see, like, hard. What? Like, and it's really not even about her. A lot of times it's about, I want other men to see me get that exactly I could pull that that's why they like to pull each other's chicks like all the guys one of the one of my friends in atlanta has a podcast called the god show ray daniel said he was like we're all sleeping with the same girls the politicians the rappers the mm -hmm. scammers the drug dealers because that is a you are being used as a way for him just like he got a car sitting out there to impress other dudes he got this chick i mean they get passed around so I understood later what my mom meant. The attention can get you thrown off and you can lose sight of the reality and, and you will lose in the yep. end. And men, honestly, we want what people can't have. So yes. I think back then it was like better to have a girl that, because I, I really didn't know her past. You know what I'm saying? But now I could be with a girl and if she got a good enough following and a crazy rap sheet, right. the, the society would tell me, in a day, like, oh, well. And the next thing I know, I see me and seven other people um, on Shade Room <laughs> with the same picture and just different locations yeah. with her. And I think that's what also ends up like kind of throwing everything off. But I wanted to actually touch on something too, okay. right? Because we're talking about lies, about where our keep the lies that are keeping women from finding the man that they would like, right? We'll find the man that would well, take them seriously because you can. Because you can like anything. You. Yeah. <laughs> so let's tie that with tricking culture. Okay. Why do, well, what would create a man to start tricking? Like, I can't, I, I, I know we did have, you did have an example of like a man who didn't want, you know, like he might be older. So he's like, I don't want to deal with the mouth and whatnot. But now I'm saying like, let's just say this is a rare 35 year old million dollar earner or not even five hundred thousand dollar a year on earner mm -hmm. right and he's got himself a 27 year old woman so she's not young but she's mature right but every woman he treats he, um, every month every woman he's getting and got mm -hmm. even prior to his money mm -hmm. he was always frivolous with his resources yeah um what does that do to the woman and what does that say about the man in your opinion well, I think we, in order to talk about tricking culture, we have to really be honest about the fact that strip club culture became mainstream, right? So when I moved to Atlanta, guys would go to this. First of all, when, when I was growing up, like you wouldn't, a guy wouldn't marry a stripper. Like that was considered taboo, right? It should go back like that. Now, <laughs> now it's changed. And the rappers were like talking about the strippers, making them the stars. Like they were like doing, I, do you know how many girls have called me? <laughs> that used to strip and have told me that they are the girlfriend of someone famous because they want me to be their publicist. And I'm like, well, how do you know that he's your boyfriend? <laughs> Yo. And they're like, well, because you know, he told me and I'm said, well, if he calls and tells me, then I'll believe that. But the, the, the strip club culture really, really glorified tricking culture. Right. Because I've been in a, I've been in a club with Atlanta keep, you know, folks, popular celebrities where 50,000, is thrown by this guy. And then he says, oh, I ought to up the ante. Somebody else is going to throw 60, right? You've been in a strip club with Floyd Mayweather. You've seen this. Type of thing. <laughs> like, you can't, <laughs> one thing you can't do is out, out throw Floyd. So, <laughs> so other guys are trying to do it, but the, but the, so really it becomes like a bidding war, a bidding war. And it's not about the woman. And the woman is used as the pawn, right? 
So I think in order to really look at that, you have, so now you have people saying, oh, well, I got my girl this. And it's like, okay, the girl is thinking he really loves me. He mm-hmm. bought me this. But really it's about men. It's about the, the toxic masculinity of showing this is what I got. So I think that culture became really glorified. And, you know, in that, in the like early 2000s, specifically in Atlanta, but it was because of the music, right? And it was, that's what was happening. And music dictates culture, right? So you got T, T-Pain saying, I'm in love with a stripper. She's doing this, doing that. Damn, you right, T-Pain. You started it. T-Pain <gasps> starting it. And then Tiger married a black child. I and remember when 50 Cent going. did it. When 50 Cent, yeah. I forgot who, what stripper it was when he was engaged to one. Drake put a lot of Malaya but we, in his record. Like, we, I know, we, I know, we already I know, knew Drake was going to do that. Like 50 Cent was the one that was like, Where? like you were supposed to be the big bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Damn, you're I mean, right. Look at what, look at, look at the girl that's in between 50 and Diddy now. Like that's, that's why there's a lot of little sex workers. Is, <laughs> 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 but that's but that the thing about it. And I, I hope women are watching this because the woman never, you can never win in that war. Like you can never win as a woman unless your goal is just to get money, but you're going to end up getting played because a man can play a different game. You have to play a woman's game. You cannot play a man's game. And I think a lot of women think, well, I can, you know, I can use my sex, I can use my sexuality and use him, but you can't because we're built different. (laughs) You know what I mean? So we just can't do that. I think women have to understand their power is in, actually, this is going to sound crazy because we don't like to do it, but your power is in saying no. Because if you're the girl he can't get, he's going to keep chasing. Once you become the girl he, he got, then you're just a story to brag about. And how many girls have gone through that? Like I said, girls have called me. Well, hey, I, this rapper told me I gave him the best head ever. Do you think he told you that? So that she would keep giving him the head? Like, yeah. probably. <laughs> but a lot of times it is, it's instinctive for a woman to want a man to um, desire her. So it, like I said, I can't lie. It is, a, it does, it is a very powerful thing, attraction in that moment. But I think we have to teach our daughters that oh, that, yeah. that what the long game looks like like yeah you can do this when you're in your 20s but can you imagine being ran through by 10 guys that have a little bit of money and then getting to be 35 and realizing that you don't okay now what and you don't have the same opportunity so I think that we that, which is why I really do a lot of the things that I do because I feel like women have to understand like you can if you want to get ahead sis do your thing but you got to know that you can't beat a man at a man's game. You really have to understand as a woman. And I feel like women have driven their value down because this girl told me that told me, she told me that Drake told her that he gave her, she gave him the best head ever. She came with Lil Wayne and she left for Drake. <laughs> we tapped out. Where are we going to go now? <laughs> Where we, we're out. We're and we're done. And we're yeah. done. Like you could go through the rest of the crew, but what? Do you, and this person was thirty-seven years old. Damn. Forty is coming. Now what? Well, forty's gonna, here now. Who's gonna pick that up? I mean, you, so I just think you have to be. You you got to be smart as a woman to know where your power is, and I can say like, from going through those stages and seeing how I've I've seen some wild stuff. The woman who says no has a different type of respect. Then it's like, oh yeah, we we did that. I mean, you see mm-hmm. Cameron and Mace, like it's hilarious. But I think a lot of times it can get, it can feel very, very powerful. I had a girl tell me that got these implants in her, she had a horrible situation happen and she needed, you know, her body just like totally turned on her after getting all this plastic surgery. And she said, Crystal, the power I felt when I got the butt job. And the way men treated me, the money they gave me and the money they spent on me, it was addictive. And I just couldn't because she kept getting Get more, and more. more and more and more. But she said, and I was just like, I grew up with a butt my whole life. So I was just like, that's crazy. But she, she's a beautiful girl. She just was tall and thin. And she said, when I got the butt implants, the sexual attraction, it felt so powerful. It made me feel like I was controlled. But that's the trick. She was never in control. Mm-hmm. Never. She was just a a target. Yeah, another target. And she, but she didn't. She didn't get that until it was too late. And now she's like in her fifties with a messed up body. Casualty of war. Yeah. I mean, 
<laughs> what, Marie? <laughs> I mean, and I agree. And I think that that's a great thing that we need to do. I say this, right? Yeah. I think that um, I would say a lot of this has played as a result of things that happened in the 1970s, 80s, 90s about just our culture, our community men not being there, yeah. right? For all the different reasons. And I think that when we see these girls from, let's just say 2000 and five all the way up to 2015 yeah. be the same way with that dec that decade and they're gonna all i don't want to say all but a lot of them have the same results mm -hmm. i think it's a beautiful thing though because at this point i'm seeing a lot of well right now um african-american fathers are the most active yes. that they've been in a, in a very long time Absolutely. i think we all got a lot of daughters right mm -hmm. um <laughs> and i think we're gonna i think it's great because Sometimes you need to see the opposite side yeah. of the spectrum, right? And what it really looks like. Right. And um, like from your like from your perspective, when you were saying how like you know you seen you know your grandparents say that I'm not going to be without an option, mm -hmm. you know, or without a, the ability to utilize my voice. Right. So then you had the rebellious side come in, mm -hmm. right? Now the rebellious side then got super <laughs> freed, yeah, right, for the next generation, and now the freedom is actually you know, hindering a lot of the people in our community in our age bracket. But it just I think it I think it's important from from my perspective to say that women, you know, for a long time women were repressed and felt like they didn't have control of their sexuality. So I actually really appreciate the fact that the younger generation, they feel empowered, but unfortunately I feel like they <laughs> they feel like the only way they can express their power of their sexuality is to share it around and tell everybody how good my stuff is like really the power is being able to say you want it but i i control who i share my body with that's the power and i think what happened is because there are so many you know unfair stereotypes that and and so much gender bias if a woman does something she's considered this if a man doesn't but that's just life and i think we have to understand we play by different rules because we're different and you have to learn what rules serve you. So just sleeping with as many men as possible to prove that you are good in bed is not really <laughs> is not really taking hold of your sexuality. It's not really being empowered. It's really playing into, you know, the same misogyny that we were fighting against. Right. So I think it has to go the other way for people to see. But now when I see young, young artists, I don't really like a lot of things they're saying, but I understand where it's coming from. But it's just like, sis, you can. Be powerful and you can be totally in control of your body, but that doesn't, that control does not necessarily mean you have to share it with everybody. Because most women, if they're honest, they've done a lot of sharing that they really didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and in the moment it can get, it can get deceitful. But when you come on the other side, it's like, I didn't even really want to do that. Yep. So I think that it has to come to a place where, you can you can be sitting on a gold mine, but it's still gold even if everybody hasn't tested it out. In fact, it makes it more valuable. I'm about to say it's actually pure, right? <laughs> so, do you think another lie? Yeah. Right. That yeah. that has been told. Do you think that, um, or what? Are, I mean, obviously, it's the possibilities. But what are the odds of mm -hmm. rebounding your, um? I don't want to say innocence, but rebounding your value yeah. in the later years of your life mm -hmm. after having a very frivolous sex life when you were younger yeah. and finding that man that will actually, that can know who you were yeah. and accept who you are. What I, would you say that is? I think that's very powerful. I think that the biggest hurdle is for you to get over your own issues. I think... <laughs> Aretha Franklin said a rose is still a rose. So Yeah, but she was definitely dead. Don't don't do that to the, the Rose could die. <laughs> <laughs> you you ever see the rose that when you touch it, it break apart? It can, but it's <laughs> but it, the, my point is it's still a rose, right? So even if you go through, even if you've gone through something that is you've done to yourself, and I've I've talked to a lot of girls, I used to have a charming etiquette class, right? I've talked to a lot of girls that have made some mistakes, but I don't think your mistakes define you. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. So I would say to any young women that are out there and have made some mistakes, 
that once you see yourself different, other people will. And the ones that don't aren't for you anyway, because you really, in my opinion, not, not necessarily because yeah. <laughs> you really only need one, right? You really only need one at the end of the day to see you as a queen. A million men can think you're beautiful, but just because they think you're beautiful doesn't mean they're going to see you as their wife, right? Yeah. So I think if you start to carry yourself in a way that you know your own value and you understand who you are, that other people will, the people that are for you will start to gravitate towards that because they have no choice. Like, you know, you can be, you can rebound from anything. A person can be in prison for 20 years, come out, get their, turn their life around. So you could do whatever. I think the problem is a lot of times most people don't believe it themselves. And men are very good at seeing through bullshit <laughs> when women try to act like, oh, just mm -hmm. because you look good on the outside, you're pulled together does not mean that you have the, their self-esteem matches your outside. And they can, I don't know how it is. Y'all can see through the self-esteem. What is that? Well, I, you want me to be honest? Yeah. With you? Listen, it's gonna sound crazy. Instagram might go crazy if they hear okay. that. One of the first things that was told to me by the OGs when I was in high school, yeah, said, "I don't care how beautiful a woman is, she's always insecure." Mm. Damn. And <laughs> going through my life, yeah, he hasn't been wrong. To be true. <laughs> <laughs> so, like. Like when you, when we, that we can always see yeah. the, the self-esteem issue. Men can see that. That's why it's so important for women to do the work. Yeah. Like I went on a Yala Van Zandt and, and she, whew, um, <laughs> that was one of the a breakthrough experiences for me. But one of the things that she always says is you have to do your work. People, it sounds crazy, but that's proof. Like if you don't do your work, other people can see. And so see. Other yeah. people can see. And specifically the other sex, because I think we're a reflection of each other, right? Man is as strong, woman is soft. Like we're a reflection, and so when you show up on, in a, an authentic way, it's very apparent, and it's very hard for someone to love you unconditionally if you don't love yourself unconditionally. Yep. So you can't expect, to, and it's very hard for someone to respect you if you don't respect yourself. So I, I think a lot of times men are testing women, and okay. we usually fail the test. And when you don't, it's it's crazy, like how the the tides turn. I think, and but the, so nowadays, yeah. right? With I would say today's um, younger generation of men, mm -hmm. um, they are easier, easily fooled, right? Now, right? Versus prior, like you know, before my my elders put me on game, right? Now we try to teach the game to the young ones, and they're like, no, it's not yeah. the same game, and it really is, right? And so now they're able to be fooled. So now you're seeing. It actually flipped a little bit. Um, well, I'm seeing it actually flip a little bit with the success rate of the woman that doesn't have to do the work because she's still able to get this man who thinks it is what it isn't. Now, I wanted to bring something up again because I really like the analogy that you used about the guy being able to, you know, rebound his life after, you know, doing a prison sentence, for example. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that I think, well, I, I don't even want to say I think. Scratch that. I know. Mm -hmm. Um there's a, a variable that doesn't get taken into consideration when it comes to living the life that you think that you're okay to live. Right. And just as a felon mm -hmm. can no longer hold a gun. Yeah. Someone who is, you know, sexually f liberated mm -hmm. and acting on it, mm -hmm. um, you can find someone that loves you. Yeah. But you still get disqualified from a certain group. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And sometimes I think it's, very important to not disqualify yourself from the race right. because you, what you might want might be in that race. Right. You know what I'm saying? I so mean, there's always consequences to actions yeah. just because you change and you can have a great life. Doesn't mean that you won't have to suffer those consequences. Right. Yep. So if like you said, with a felon, you can't, some jobs are not going to hire a felon. I don't care what you do yep. or how you know? great you are. Yeah. I don't yeah. care. So you have to figure out a different way. And I think, um, Finding yourself and acknowledging your reality is a big thing. I think it's a big thing in dating, period, because sometimes you may not have done anything. The person you want may just not want you. And you have to know that. You have yep. to be okay with that. If you are wanting something that is very different than what you are, chances are it's not going to want you back. Mm -hmm. You know? And I think, like, you know what it is? A lot of people, they, we tell kids to go to college, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, you should go to college. You could be anything you want. Yeah. And the, and the crazy thing is, that is true. But 
Kind of. Well, I don't believe that you, right. you know what I'm saying? But I'm saying in the general sense, right. it's true. Go to college and then you can be anything you want to be, even if it's not the degree you had, right? <laughs> right? right. So, but when I look at it, I'm like, why do we tell all these kids to go to college, right? Mm -hmm. And this has nothing to do about it really being a beneficial thing. A lot of people that go to college aren't technically educated anyways. Um, but they can have a, you know, an education that's it reputable. You, it proves you stuck something through and you accomplish some a goal. A goal. That's right? pretty much what it proves. <laughs> but you know what it also does? It leaves your options open. Yeah. Right? So even if you don't go to school, mm -hmm. even if you don't I mean, even if you don't go and get the career that, you know, specified in your major, mm -hmm. maybe ten years from now, when you're not twenty two, mm -hmm. when you're thirty two, you might have went to school as a biology major, hypothetically. And you went and pursued acting. Right. And now at 32, you've actually learned something that you never knew before that makes you want to study medicine. Right. And now you have that foundation. Exactly. And I think that we look at dating in the same aspect, right? Not, not eliminating yourselves from what you can get mm -hmm. by just doing the things that you need to do to make you qualified for what you may want futuristically, even if you don't know if you want it. Right. right. Like I went to school. Right. And, and it didn't work out for me. <laughs> but I knew what I wanted though. Right. But I'm doing what I what I wanted to do. So it's, you know, I'm so blessed. It didn't work out. Our culture switched. And like when I was growing up, I used to want to be like Felicia Rashad. Like I used to I remember Maya Angelou, she told me she was proud of me for what I was doing. I was like, oh my God. Like that was a big deal to me, right? Because I looked up to women that were older. But at this point, older women <laughs> want to be younger. Yep. <laughs> right. So you have 40 year old women and 46 year old women trying to look like and act like the 23 year old. Then how do you know? Because when you're young, you don't think there's consequences. Right. Yeah. The only way you know there's consequences is someone like you said, the OG pulls you to the side and is like, look. So I feel like the problem is in our culture specifically, like we don't value experience and age. Like I look to those women for what I want it to be. But there's nobody like that now. Like now, I mean, there are some, I, you know, there's, there's some amazing, but really the culture is chasing youth. So it's like backwards. The older and, women yeah. want to be young. That's the only thing. Like at, oh, <laughs> there are women and I'm not, this is no, this is no disrespect, but no women in their sixties getting BBLs. Like That's crazy, what is right? happening? What are we doing? So how can a woman who's 23 trust your leadership if you're trying to look like her? Felicia Rashad wasn't trying to look like, I was trying to look like, I was trying to be like her. But if, if she was on the stage with, you know, her butt out and trying to look like me, then I wouldn't have respected her. So I feel like we don't, of course, there's, people don't believe there's consequences because the older people are lying. <laughs> They're, yep, lying. Yep. They're lying. They're chasing the same thing. So you have rappers in their 40s and 50s getting into beef with, Kodak Black, like, it, that makes <laughs> no sense. There should be, like, in order to lead, you have to lead by example. Yeah. And to me, everybody is chasing the youth, the youth, the younger culture, which makes them disrespect. Why would I look at you? You want to be like me. Well, I think another thing is, and I'll take the accountability for the men, and I hate that I have to do that right now. <laughs> But there's a lot of older men that want to be young. Yes. Right? Yes. And a lot of times it's the ones, I would say, mm -hmm. that aren't married. Uh, it always. And so now they want to be young so they can get, get young the women. young girl. <laughs> right? And now you have the older women mm -hmm. who want to look young because the one in her age group is looking at the younger girl and dressing young. And yeah. damn near acting young. Acting young, yeah. You know? Yeah. And... The thing is, it's like, at what point are we going to have people that want to actually be a real community role model? Well, I think it takes, like I said earlier, like I know I'm going to say something that your audience is not going to like. And that's okay. That's beautiful. I'm okay with them not liking it because I'm not, I know I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I've, I've already lived that and I've, done, I've lived that and I've seen it. So I know, but I think we have to be okay. This cancel culture and people feeling like they have to placate What's popular is a problem. People are, people know, but they're just quiet. Mm -hmm. And you're right. There is like for hip hop, that is one thing I can say I really do appreciate about Jay-Z is he 
did show his maturity. Maturation is a beautiful thing. But unfortunately for women, <laughs> there's very few examples of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're wearing the same getup that you were in your 20s <laughs> and you're acting the same, that's a problem. You know what I mean? So I think that we, I think that, and I feel like that's a part of what I have to do. I have to say uh, that's not, it doesn't, it doesn't make you powerful. It doesn't make you a boss to have sex with all these guys. And if you get mad at me, that's okay. But at least I planted that seed yeah. because that's what I'm supposed to do. Just like when I was younger watching Claire Huxtable, she was just fly, but she also was not saying the same thing that I was thinking when I was watching it. She was leading by example. I might not have agreed with it, but now that I'm older, I get it. So I think that you have to, our culture has to embrace that. And I think people that are older, we have to be brave enough to make young people mad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, Carisha, please. That's a whole, like, <laughs> like I'm not going to, I'm not going to agree with her. She's not going to agree with me. And that's how it should be. If I yeah. did agree with Carisha, what the hell have I been doing for these 20 years? If I haven't grown, we should not agree. Right. So, but I know people my age that want to cater to that. It's like, Ooh, I, and I'm like, girl, <laughs> that makes no that's the city. Like, I can't be a, I'm not a girl. 50 years old. But the, that's a problem. I'm not a girl. I'm a woman. I'm a woman, but that's a problem. The problem is we don't want to piss them off because they're louder, but they need us. Yep. They need us. And if, and if they don't agree, my daughter didn't agree when I told her that she couldn't wear certain things to school, but she's, my daughter is 28 years old now and she gets what I was saying. You know what I mean? So, but if I was saying the same things that she was, I would, my, my grandma used to always say, it's nothing worse than being old for no reason. And there are a lot of people in our culture that are old for no reason. Just old. Now you just look worse. Because <laughs> with, with a platform. With a platform. It's like no matter what a woman does that is in her 50s, you know, you can be, you could be gorgeous. You're still not in your 20s. And you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. Because you, you have the maturity and the wisdom. And you're supposed to be able to take them under your wing and say, girl, I got you. And you have so many more opportunities. I can add my wisdom to that and help you push you forward. Why do you think, all right, so obviously addiction is like a drug, right? I mean, not addiction, attention, Duh. attention is a drug, right? But why is it like, why is it so, I guess, addictive to the point where you're like, you don't want to grow? You know what I'm saying? Like, like what about it makes you not want to say, okay, it's time for me to go to the next level in my life? Or, you know, let me go to the bigger step, the bigger picture, which actually has more money because... You know, know what I mean? Money. But there are a lot of people that are driven by, there are a lot of people that would rather be popular than rich. Like, really. Like, I know that from working with celebrities. Like, some of them, if you say, I'm going to give you $50,000 or I'm going to give you a brand deal that puts you on billboards across the country, they would pick that because they get addicted to people seeing them and recognizing them. That has more value to them than actually the money. I also want to be honest because it's it's a different like I told you earlier that power of feeling like a man's attracted to you it feels good right and I think the same thing with men a man wants to know that when he that he can catch that he can hunt and he can get that and he can capture and take it back a woman wants to know that she can show up in all her feminine glory and 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 be attractive and desirable and as you age it changes right and it it it's a little daunting <laughs> because it's different. So I know my, I love my husband to death and I know that he loves me. But when I go out, I have a different response than I did when I went out in my twenties. And I have, and, and, and sometimes that can get to you. It's like, man, I used to be, <laughs> and that <laughs> changed a little bit, right? But you have to know that it's, it's, it's a different, it's a different, it's different levels. And when I see my daughter doing that, I'm like, okay, it's kind of like in The Lion King when, when Mufasa was like, the sun has set on my time. Now the sun is on your time. <laughs> like you have to know you have to know when it's time for you to go to that next place. But I'm not going to lie and say that it can't. It doesn't. It is a little bit like um, it, it's any type of growth is uncomfortable. So you have to be willing to go through that. And I think you also have to see value in yourself. And if your only value has been in being attractive. If you've never focused on anything other than getting men's attention, then you're going to have a hard time getting older. You know what I just kind of like, I just kind of like gathered right now. Mm -hmm. 
you said often that um a lot of people they either do things for money or they do things for attention, but the attention feels empowering. Mm -hmm. So if I say power, so we have a lot of people nowadays that want to do things for money. Yeah. They want to do things for power. People don't want to value respect. Yeah. And when you have respect, mm -hmm. you have more power mm -hmm. that can earn you limitless money. It's true. And I think that we got the game messed up mm -hmm. because we value so many people who have money and power, but no respect. Right. But we don't want to value the people that have respect that got their money and power. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Kendrick because he kind of said that, you know, in his <laughs> in his thing. Well, he did. He said, you know, money, power, respect, but the last one is better. Yeah. And and that that's takes a, that takes a person that understands the long game, but it also takes wisdom to understand that because it's eat like the tangible things are the things that if you're if you're dealing with your self esteem, you're trying to figure out who you are. Respect is not something that you can, like, it's something that you can feel, but it's not something you get an immediate gratification upon, right? Mm -hmm. It's something that's built over time. So you pull up in that brand new something, and you it's immediate gratification. Yeah. The girls is coming out. A friend of mine just got a brand new Maserati, and he's like, I pull up in this. I get all the girls. Duh. <laughs> like, that's not a big deal. But to him, he wants that immediate gratification. The same thing with power. When a person can... When you see what people will do, I've seen, and, and I'm a definitely like all for women. Like I said, I've done charm and etiquette. I love empowering women. Women have, I've seen women do stupid stuff because like, okay, I've been in studios and the girls will just start. I was at a party for, this is what I first learned. Because at first I was like, men are the problem. <laughs> you know, it's men. Hip hop is misogynistic. I was like writing essays about it because I've always been a writer. I was really like, black men are just not respecting women. I moved to Atlanta, started representing rappers. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, it's not them, it's us. I went to a party that T.I. and Michael Vick had. I have never seen such beautiful women doing things that nobody had asked them to do. Yep. No one had even asked them to do it. I'm like, at least be smart. Like, wait until there's a dollar amount offer. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> what are you doing? What is the, what are you looking for right now? Because you're just in violation. And it's like a thirst and a hunger to just be near. Like, you're not going to take him home. Mm -hmm. What are you? You just want his attention for the moment. It's wild. And that happens. When And so I can understand as a man how that could get addictive and also <laughs> boring. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. It, I, they'll do whatever, they'll do whatever. So, okay, so let me see you do this. Let me see you do that. And then it and he's up, up, it, it, up, it, up, it, up. It ups, ups, ups. So, I mean, but that let me know that it's not necessarily men are not always the motivators behind women's bad behavior. Sometimes it's just them, just like we talked about men wanting to show off to other men. Sometimes women want to show other women, I'm the baddest mm -hmm. in the room. I can get it. And I'm like, but well, what are you getting? This is going to be a very quick, very unsatisfying situation. Validation is like a disease at this point. But it's because you're not happy with yourself. Because there's no way that you should be taken. I would be looking like, he didn't even ask you to take off your clothes yet. <laughs> like, at least just hold on until he asks. Let him yep. ask. Because how is he going to value it if you just do it? And I've also been on... You know, when videos were a big deal, when I first moved there, we were still doing a lot of videos, right? And I remember thinking, because I moved there, and I used to work corporate, so I thought, oh, I'll go to a video set, and all the guys are going to be just, you know, I thought, oh, my God, you'll lose your husband in one of these things. First of all, because guys are so, they're numb, because they see naked women doing crazy things all the time because they have money or because they're around money. I'm not even, I'm not T.I. or Michael Vick. I'm just hanging out. And I'm going to get some of that just because I'm just associated cause, yeah, with yeah. it, right? So It's hard to say no. It's, they're not going to say no. <laughs> yeah. Why would they? They can't outrun it. Like, I can't. It's too Who bad. Who am I to say no to God's child? <laughs> if she's, I'm not a dream killer. If she wants to do this, let her do what she wants to do. I can't even blame them. But my point is, like, the men don't. I remember I was sitting down. We were, we were a video set, video shoot for the T.I. Scrappy and a bunch. This was, like, early 2000s. And I thought that they were all going to just be enamored with the girls because the girls were beautiful. Myself and another, we were publicists on set, junior publicists on set. 
And they were all sitting around talking. We were just talking, really, really talking. And it's like, wow, they actually can see through it. Now, when it came time to party, they, they party. Out. But really, men are not as driven by one motiv physical motivator as women think. And I think you have to understand what it is about you that's dope outside of your curves and your sex in order for you to think that he would. Yeah. You know? Like, that's a, well, I actually said this on the podcast here before, or on the episode here before. Um, women have to find another way to compete with each other rather than getting naked. Because just don't compete, just be you. Well, yeah, I think I think competition. Well, yeah. that is. Oh, I'm sorry, that is a part of comp competing, right? If they compete by being themselves, yeah. The problem is if you lose, it hurts your ego, hurts right? Your ego. Because right. you're like, damn me, I wasn't picked, you know. Right. But that's okay because that's how you know it really wasn't for you. Right. That takes a lot of maturity. To get it, to that it, point. I, but like, I don't think that's a maturity thing that we have to wait through years of life. Mm -hmm. I think that is something that we should be able to instill, you know, I, I would say within high school, you know, be yourself and whoever's for you is for you. Right. Try it out. And I promise you, if you go in the other way, one, maybe one or two experiences, you'll see how it doesn't work in your favor. Yeah. You know, and when that level of competition or that type of comp competitive spirit stops, where they're competing to be nude or, or just to do more, right? To have less. Right. Then we can have you know, it's going to take like real people like yourself to say that, because what people want to hear is if I get enough money, I remember one of my guy friends told me actually it was a guy I was dating, told me this. He said, my grandfather told me if I get enough money, I can have any woman I want, mm -hmm. which is true to an extent. But that woman probably is not going to want you. But that's not a man, though. That's what I'm saying. But, yeah. but, but I'm saying like that's that's what we want to hear. So a woman wants to hear, I want to be so bad I can get any dude in the room. Well, that's not real. And so someone needs to say that's not really like really what's for you is going to be for you. And anytime you have to change who you are for something, it's probably not really for you. But that's not the answer that people want to hear. People want to hear I can ball out and get what I want. I, you know, I sleep when I die. Like if you sleep when you die, you're going to be sick. That is, dumb. <laughs> that is stupid. But that sounds great. But, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. The, also, the thing is, another lie that's told, and this is the part that's told by men, is like, you know, money is what matters. You feel me? So, like, men think that money is what matters. And although it does, and I'm right. never going to take it away. Right. But there's a lot. Well, here's a lie for you women. There's a lot of men that hide behind his money. And when you learn that men are hiding behind money, he doesn't really know who he is. We already know that. Yeah, but they still do it. No, no, we know that we're using him. So okay. women know that. In fact, that plays into our game. So that's women. Women know gotcha. we're well. We're well aware so that you men can tell hide which behind. One is... Yeah, just like you can tell the insecure women, we can tell the insecure men because the insecure man will offer. That's what so many guys get upset about tricking. A lot of times, just like I said, the girls are getting naked without being asked. Men are offering to do things without a woman asking. I do you and and I'm just like I'm never. I've always been a girl that works, get her own. When I first got there. Do you know how many guys offered? They they offer to do like I'm not even asking. It's very hard for me to turn down. Yeah, you know it's not really fair <laughs> for me to do that. Who am I to tell God's I'm child? Say, no, yeah, no. So I'm saying men men do the same thing. And so when you know when a man doesn't know you, but he's just offering to pay bills or he's offering to. I was telling um, my friend earlier my, when my son got ready to go to college, I was trying to come up with twenty thousand dollars like quick. I was like, I gotta get this money. And this guy was like, that I didn't like was like, I'll give you the money. And so one of my other guy friends was like, tell him to give it to you in cash, like right now. <laughs> so why would you offer to pay $20,000? Like, he, yep. and he knew I wasn't into him. So that's not on me. That's on him. And I know he's insecure. So, I mean, women, we already know that. You're not telling yeah. us a secret. We know and we use that to our benefit. So a lot of times women, that's what I tell men that I probably shouldn't because I'm not having my sister's back. But really, like, any girl you got to buy really don't want you. Thank you, Crystal. Um, I, you know, I was trying to say it, but maybe it's better when you say it. You know, they're not gonna like me to say it because I really did go against girl code. Because we, <laughs> I we, it's it. Well, I mean, it gets what they want because men, men are. We know that if a man is insecure, you can play to his ego and he'll give you whatever you want. Yeah, you know, but except make you his, right? He's not gonna necessarily marry you, but he'll give you money and stuff because that's what he needs to do to feel manly. Feel big, yeah little guy we've always glorified the wrong people yeah and so 
our downfall usually stems from the top down, yep. right? And it's the people that we voted in power, whether or not we realize we voted in power. We're the one who bought those CDs. Right. We're the one who paid for that music. We're the one who put you in a position Champion to have this money. We have been taught. That's why I remember I, I, I had the honor of interviewing Cicely Tyson, like six months before she died. Wow. And okay. I asked her about the Me Too movement because I was just like, I know being in entertainment in Atlanta, it was not safe for a woman. Like you come in a room, you're uncomfortable and you're groped. You can't say anything because other people aren't going to want to work with you if you say something. So I was a little bit better because I was older and I was married and I knew how to, I had two kids. Like I wasn't necessarily the target, but I still got a lot of things that made me uncomfortable. You know, and I had a lot of people I had to, to check or just stop working with, you know what I mean? But I remember asking her, what does she think about the Me Too movement? And she said, that's not our business, right? She said, that's not white women's business and our business are two different things. Our culture is different. So do you know how many black women were assaulted, raped, but we just don't talk? We would never come out the way some others has. And some of those, and some things I think I understand it, but I also think it's part of our, keeps us stuck because there's this unspoken mm -hmm. loyalty to each other because we, we know that not many of us, if Diddy and Jay-Z are two billionaires and we only have a few, don't want them to go down. Like that makes me look bad. So I can't say anything. And I, I understand where that loyalty comes, but it also keeps us, it, it keeps us down. Of course. It, it, Honestly, again, it'll only lead us further astray. And we got to get, I, I pray, and hopefully, you know, within this, my lifetime, everybody who doesn't belong in a position of power won't, right? That's probably never going to happen. But at least balance it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right now, I feel like it's a nine to, nine to one odds. The nine to one that are with, with the, the shits. with the shits, right? <laughs> that are doing things that, you know, will go against a lot of people's morals. And there's one person who's standing there and he's like, I can't, or she is like, I can't fight that fight with nine of them. Yeah. And my thing is, I would pray that it at least gets to a five and four or like a five on five. And it's not going to until we start having these different types of things. Now, I do know that there's a lot of consent that goes on in these places. Mm -hmm. I also do know that there's some that aren't really mm -hmm. consented, right? And the second that we start to stop enabling our successors who are actually our demise, yeah. that's the second that we'll be able to be at a better, you know, position as a community. Because if we like, for example, we're seeing on a smaller scale, we're seeing a lot of black fathers that are now, you know, coming to the forefront and yeah. being good fathers, right? right? You know what happened? Black fathers had to check other black men. Mm -hmm. Yo, if you're not going to take care of your kids, you can't be my friend. Yeah. I'm definitely not going to be around you. And you got two, right. two kids at home that you don't even see that's, mm -hmm. or at somebody else's house. Right. And so after a while, now you're seeing the tides shift. You know, we're all kind of collectively. I just saw, I thought it was so funny. I just saw a dude uh, doing a, a remix, um, doing like one of those like um, freestyles mm -hmm. with his daughter in his hand. And I thought it was funny. It, it was, it was, you know, it was cool. He was saying like, yo, my daughter's bad and she don't want to listen. But that's kind of funny because, it, you know, it is what it is. But now we're actually seeing that being the, yeah, the spotlight. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take time. But I do think everything will weed itself out. And, and you know, unfortunately, what's going to happen is, you know, the people who are in those positions of power that are doing the, with the shits things, <laughs> um, they're going to burn their resources and favors and or bridges and favors. And eventually that's going to open up spots for then the people to come and fill them. And now I just hope yeah. that we have people that are going to actually hold us to a higher standard yeah. um, and going to value the respect and not the money because yeah. anybody can pay you to do anything. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Money well, the, is, yeah, money and fame. It's a very hard thing to fight. But I do think. Like, Nip, like say, Nipsey Hussle was with yeah. the. Res he had respect. Yeah. yeah. And then he had money. Yeah. And fame. And but he had fame from respect. A one of one. A one of one. But I do think that things are changing. And I do have to credit the younger generation because 
there's <laughs> the funny thing is because they don't have respect. Like a lot of them yeah. don't respect. <laughs> they don't respect no, anything. So it's like I'm not gonna keep your secret. F you. I'm saying what I want to say, and I actually like really admire that because for years we were just like, oh, don't say nothing. Like, <laughs> master. Yeah, and it's like you said, consent. Consent is a funny thing because if you're told you're not going to have this opportunity unless you do this then you will cons you will consent but it's not necessary it's made under duress but that's also some accountability that you have to take for yourself um and i think that's what Cicely Tyson was saying she was like we don't you know as black women we just are different in the way we do things right yeah. but i think that the regime is changing because i said young people don't have that same loyalty to a system that has not served them well. Yeah. So it's like, you want us to be quiet, but why? Yep. I'm not. And so I, I admire that and I'm glad, but it is uncomfortable. You know, it's hard to see people. It broke my heart to see what happened with Bill Cosby, but it needed to happen. You know what I mean? Like to the extent, I don't know everything, but I'm just saying if somebody is doing things like that, then they need to be held accountable. Even with R. Kelly, like we can admire the art, but we have to say it's yes, this person, has done something because it was probably done to them. Most of the people in the industry that are with the shits, the shits were probably done to them mm -hmm. when they were trying to get in or they were trying to do things. So it's it's a it's a it, it's just a Great trickle point. down effect. But I do think in order for things to change, there have to be people that are not connected and don't feel a loyalty to that and really are willing to stand up and and make things uncomfortable because like I said earlier, like you have to be uncomfortable to grow. So I do think we're growing and I do, I can say being a woman in entertainment, cause I did not want my daughter in the business. I was just like, no, <laughs> because I didn't, I seen girls getting naked in the studio, having sex in the studio, in the sound booth to, to be able to stay in the room. Like, uh, and I didn't want my daughter to be around that. And of course my daughter wanted to be a part of the music industry, but I can say now she's a DJ and there are other female, female DJs that put her on. There are other female DJs that have her back. You know what I mean? And so that wasn't the case. It was very male dominated and very much a thing of you're not getting in this door unless you get on your knees. Like that is not, mm -hmm. yeah, that's just real. So I didn't, of course, I didn't want her to have to deal with that. So me seeing other women reach out and grab her and say that are younger and say, we got you like, that's cool to me. So I think things are changing and her generation, they don't, they're not going to be quiet. They're going to yeah. go to Instagram and they're going to keep talking. So in that way, I think it's positive because it's really shaking up something that really shouldn't have. We just had created a really toxic system. Well, I think it, it goes to show again with just what has happened, right? The people who had power are losing power. It's like, it's like holding on to a rope, but you can only hold the rope for so long before it starts to slip. Yeah. Right. And I think at this point, like social media, one of the beautiful things about social media mm -hmm. is it allows you to literally create a business, yeah. a lucrative business at that, without having to sacrifice some of your own ethics. Right. Right. You don't need that door anymore. You don't need the gatekeepers that were often because you're you you are in a you're in a situation where you were there before the wave, right? You were you were able to to be there before, but I do think that the interesting thing is like. Younger people are always going to be more creative and be fresher, right? Because that's just how it goes. So that's why you see people that are older go back and get younger yeah. people to, you know, click up with yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. Or just to represent them or be, you know, it like, you know, artists go back and try to connect yeah. with the young person, do a, do a, do a uh, collab with them because it connects them with that audience. But the reality is that only works to a certain extent. Exactly. Right. So it's like, okay, like for instance, I'm going to use Diddy and Carisha. We know that definitely made him look cool, right? Because mm -hmm. it has a, a history of like going and connecting with the hot thing. So when you put her on Revolt, because mm, Diddy's yeah. not necessarily what people in their 20s was checking for. Like, you know, so you go get the city girl. That's the most ratchet, most, mm -hmm. yeah, she's connected. And that feels raw. That makes me feel authentic. And you part, you, you, you be out with her. Some of that rubs off on you, but not really, <laughs> not mm -hmm. really. Like, it looks like that. But it doesn't really work. It doesn't. And so that's why I'm saying, like, when it sticks, it's different. Yeah. You know, I remember six, seven years ago, I was in the studio with uh, Jadakiss, right? Mm -hmm. He was on FaceTime with Chief Keith. Mm -hmm. 
And he hung up the phone. He said, you know, when you get older, you always got to stay in tune with the youth because mm-hmm. they have it. Mm-hmm. And, and that's how you last longer. You look at Drake's career. Oh my God. Right? A great example of that. Yeah. Drake has always been on what's new. Mm-hmm. And he's always been the one to pr- sexy red. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All but, them. but, but, but I, I, yeah. And exactly. So now who is the power? That's what I'm trying to say. The power is in the youth. They don't know it. They don't have the money. Exactly. They don't have the, So, of course, like, look at that situation with Reesh. Of course, it's a good look for her mm-hmm. to be with him. But really, it was he was benefiting more from oh, for her. her. Yep. But it doesn't matter because. She needed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but now, but now, look at where they stand. But now, what I'm trying to say is, you're missing what I'm saying. That the playing field is closer to equal than you think. So without each, without each other, one dies out. And the the crazy thing is this: if everybody who was new decided to not work with anybody who was old, mm-hmm. the old will phase out, mm-hmm. and there would be new leaders amongst it. No. There would not be new leaders because they're not leaders. They're not leaders. You think they don't, so? No, they're only, they're not trying to, they don't even understand. No. So who's going to be the next Drake then? I don't think there probably will be because you don't Drake, think there no, will be? no, 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 no. Understand that Drake is not just, Drake is smarter than at most people. You know why? Definitely is. Because he understands that his, <laughs> his career, look at his career. He understands the long game. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's not there, but see, artists now, like I said, I, I, I represent TLC. TLC was taught to put on a show. So where you guys probably don't even know what they're doing, right? Mm-hmm. They made a lot of money last year. I won't say how much. They're on tour because they know how to find, their management is extremely smart. It's like, okay, well, this group of people doesn't necessarily value things that are not popping, but this group of people over here does. And we were taught to put on, to do all the things that will continue to make us popular will continue to make us valuable to that audience so they have they sell out they're doing great they went to japan open for janet jackson they're making a lot of money but it's like they understood that in order to do that i have to create a product that is long lasting i don't think that young artists today get that at all because if i I was talking to a friend of mine that manages one of the a very popular young artists and i said you know i was working for it with this school and i said hey i need an artist to come in that the kids will be excited about, but we need it. He got to be able to perform something that is not going to piss the parents off and make the school shut down. <laughs> he did not have anything, anything like that. That's crazy. You know what I mean? So he's not preparing. He's not preparing for that. So what is he going to do in 10 years? Because that audience is going to grow and they're not going to want to hear what he's talking about right now. I don't know if Booty Hole is Brown is going to be what that audience <laughs> wants to hear at that time and are you how are you how are you going to craft a product that's going to continue to sell i can you can find fifty thousand people in this city that want to hear ain't too proud to bed performed the way they remember it when they were young i don't think because they remember how that made them feel it's not the same and so what i'm saying with drake drake is extremely smart and he manages to tap into what's hot and keep it but he still has a foundation that is solid that most of these young artists don't. And I, I agree. But what I will say is what Drake just said, mm-hmm. right? I want you guys to understand. Mm-hmm. And his last biggest song, mm-hmm. he was like, they said there would, never, never, there would never be another Michael Jackson, but I'm one away from beat it. And there would always be mm-hmm. another Drake. The, the, he said he's one away from beat it as far as like a record? No, no, no he's one away from beat it said, in terms of the top records. Okay. Right now, I think just like Michael Jordan and LeBron James, they're not the same people. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the actual same people. We're talking about the impact and control that they have. But I'm talking about the longevity of it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's created. I don't think that artists today, because the goal is not the same. There's no, if you don't, if you don't, like if you listen to managers of artists that have catalogs that enable them to have a career that they can still do what they do for years, is different than if you talk to a manager or somebody that just blew up. Yeah. Accidentally. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, got yeah. a hot record. Off of TikTok. Uh, yeah, and I got <laughs> maybe another hot record, but I'm not going to have a 20-year career off that record. Not many artists do, mm-hmm. but the ones that do, there's a reason that they do. And so I think with Drake, I don't think there's going to be another. First of all, I think it's too open. Like, Drake, Drake came, like, right when things were changing. Yeah. 
there's no superstars. How are y'all going to have superstars? Because everybody is popular. Like I got girls that will tell me because I have two million followers because that people like my ass that I'm just as good as Holly Berry. I have more followers than Holly Berry and she's an actual actress with Oscars. Like that's ridiculous. <laughs> so you're not going to have superstars like that. You're not going to have a Drake because you're going to have 10 people that blow up and have am amazing records, but they're not going to have longevity. Drake is Drake because he's been around since for 20 years. So like, let's look at Nicki Minaj, right? Mm -hmm. She's, yeah, she's and, she's back and that, who is one age. of the people that who is one of the people who they've been comparing her to who has actually sustained seven years no my cardi cardi and and but but this is what but okay but understand what i'm saying there will always be one right i don't think there's gonna be many but nikki same thing that happened to nikki with cardi b there's a cardi b that once nikki does fizzle out cardi Do b would probably take have the same but I'm saying I'm not saying there's not going to be people that would be extremely popular. I'm saying that the appetite of the consumer is so different. Consumers yeah. don't buy into someone like we used to buy into. You know why Michael Jackson is Michael Jackson? Because we bought into him as a person. person. I didn't buy into him as we a We didn't buy into Drake as a person? Yes, we did. Who? Girls. Well, I mean, who he was after. Maybe girls. you guys did. I don't know. Yeah, we did. Let me say, I, I can't talk about us. I mean, I, mean, I can only talk about us. Yeah. Drake, 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 women. And he was also endorsed by the best artists at one period of time. You know what I'm saying? But And again, girls. And, and everybody knows that women are the biggest consumers. And so men... Uh, are they the biggest ones? Yes. Okay. Okay, so... All right, so let's tell... Um, I actually did see this on Instagram. Okay. Um, I was doing some research, right? Mm -hmm. Um. But by the way, I want to say I really enjoyed our conversation today. So you did mention that some things that we spoke about are in your book. And this mm -hmm. book is titled The Alpha Female Is Me. It's not him. It's, it's not him, it's you. Yeah. Right? Yes. And um, what inspired you to write this? So I think really what you said earlier, like why I wanted to come um, and talk to you about just the lies that women are told. Because I think that my own journey as an independent woman that had been after going through divorce and working on my own, I kind of had adopted this idea that I don't need a relationship, right? I don't need a man. I don't need a relationship. Not because I didn't want one, but because I didn't think I could have what I wanted. And so I think that women a lot of times are told that if a man doesn't come packaged exactly as I want him, that it's not worth pursuing. And that's what I was, I had bought into. And I had to go through, I went through a period where I had to really understand and deprogram myself and realize that I had adopted that mindset because I was hurt and I was afraid of getting hurt. And, but it also wasn't true because nobody really wants to spend their life alone. Yeah. So I had to realize that my thought process was keeping me single. Which is amazing. If you had to, <laughs> I have one question, right? This is okay. like, I ask the authors that I actually am interested in this question. <laughs> okay. Um, if you had to pick one chapter mm -hmm. that's your favorite chapter, I mean, obviously, it probably is your whole favorite book, right? But mm -hmm. if you had to pick one chapter, which chapter would it be? Ah, that's hard because, I mean, it's really like, okay, I, I was, it's a lot of lessons here that I think women can relate to. But I think probably the most important thing is identifying self love. See how God works? Did you, do, did you pick that chapter? And I'm not lying. Oh my God, that is cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. And I'm that not crazy. lying. That's crazy. And that's that's the first thing I looked at. I was like, wow, identifying self love. I was like, this might be a good one. And you literally said it. That is weird. That is that's that's weird. It's but not weird. It's real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> but I think the reason that a lot of women can't believe that there could be a good man that it could actually treat them right and value them is because especially alpha females or career-driven females, we're taught to be proud of ourselves based on our accomplishments. So if you don't love yourself unconditionally, it's hard for, some, for you to imagine someone else could. So I would get, I was so hard on myself if I didn't accomplish things. I didn't just spend time loving Crystal, even when Crystal wasn't performing at the highest level. And so that was my insecurity, right? And so you try to look the best, be in the gym, do all these things, but we're, none of us are perfect. So you're asking for 
a perfect man trying to act like you're perfect. And the reality is none of us are perfect. And so when you accept your flaws, it's easier for you to accept someone else having flaws and you guys coming together and working on them. So I think self-love is really, really, really important to anyone's journey, but specifically for women, because like we talked about earlier, if you don't really love yourself, you're not going to attract the right kind of man. You're going to you are going to attract the wrong man. And then you're going to say men are evil, men are horrible. But no, sis, it's really that you are attracting them because of what you're putting out. Yep, just got to get aligned with you. Yeah, it all starts with it. I agree. And for those of you who do get the book, it is on page 21. Now, I'm not going to lie what I'd like to do. Uh Like, you know, some people, they read the introductions and everything of of books. I like if I actually meet an author. Uh I want to start off at their chapter and then go around it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just think that it's the best way to do it, you know? And then obviously if it doesn't, you know, resonate, we could just go on forward, forward with the book. But yeah. I think that's a dope starting point for anybody who is, you know, looking just to get what they truly feel will give them fulfillment in their life. Yeah. Um, but it's been great having you. I know you're going to come back. Yeah, this has been fun. Right? This has been fun. So let's go ahead and tell the audience where they can find you at before we sign off. Okay, so um, I am. I actually have a YouTube channel that I talk about relationships. That's all I talk about. Well, I do some celebrity interviews too, but I really talk about relationships, specifically within the Black community, because I really want to be a positive voice to remind us that we can have love. In the midst of all this, <laughs> city girls and city boys. So you can find me on YouTube at From Crystal XO, and I am on Instagram at The Real Crystal Jordan. Crystal, it's been great having you. This has been fun. Thank you for having me. No problem. Well, I know we'll have you again. Yes. <laughs> um, so all of you that are watching, make sure you like, subscribe on her channel. Like, subscribe on our channel as well. Thank you for supporting both of us. Um, and we look forward to seeing you next time I ate at the table.